All right, folks, buckle up, because today we're diving into a high-stakes tech war that's reshaping the global order as we speak. The battlefield? Silicon. The weapons? Semiconductors. And the front lines? Stretching from Washington to Beijing, Amsterdam to Taipei. It's been nearly two years since President Biden lit the fuse on what many now call the Silicon Cold War. It began with sweeping export bans, AI chip restrictions, and pressure on key allies to join the crusade. The goal was clear. Isolate China, kneecap its tech ambitions, and lock the doors to advance semiconductor capabilities. And yet, China hasn't slowed down. In fact, it might be speeding up. One of the clearest signs? The a moment that jolted Western observers awake, showing them just how much had slipped under their radar. And if you think this is a one-off, think again. Let's rewind. Biden didn't just throw sanctions around. He, at the very bottom, China, blocked, banned, cut off from the cutting edge, no access to advanced AI chips, no lithography machines, nothing. But it didn't stop there. The US twisted the arms of allies like Japan and the Netherlands, ordering them to follow suit. China was blacklisted, and the message was clear. If you help them, you're against us. Then Trump came back into the picture, and instead of scaling down, he, now the consequences are unfolding. Take ASML, the Dutch titan of chip-making equipment. This company doesn't just play in the chip arena, it owns the most crucial stadium. ASML's machines are essential for producing the world's most advanced chips, especially those in the extreme ultraviolet spectrum, and no one else, not Intel, not TSMC, can match their precision. But now, they're caught in the crossfire. ASML's stock has cratered, down a staggering 33% in just a year. Their first quarter order book was expected to hit $5 billion. They managed only $4 billion, a painful 20% miss. And here's the kicker, this is just the beginning. Because in 90 days, thanks to escalating trade tensions, the 10% tariff ASML currently faces could double to a crushing 20%. And that's not all. Trump's team just made a stunning announcement. A whole category of electronics, including smartphones and microchip components, will now be exempt from reciprocal tariffs. Why? Because they're being reclassified. You heard that right. Those products will soon fall under a new weaponized category semiconductor sectoral tariffs and they'll be hit with a minimum 25% import tax. The purpose? Forcing production back to American soil. But ASML has no plans to move its production to the US, so who pays the price? American companies, Intel, TSMC plants in Arizona and others will have to swallow the cost, or pass it down. But ASML isn't giving away their tech for free. They'll hike prices to offset the tariffs and US buyers will be left holding the bill. Here's the irony. ASML holds the keys to chip making, yet they're now facing economic siege from both East and West. Their sales to China have plunged from 41% of revenue last year to just 27% in the first quarter of 2025. The US won't let them sell their most advanced tech to Beijing and now, Trump's tariffs threaten to gut their earnings from American sales too. They're trapped in a double vice. Even worse, the U.S. could force ASML to relocate operations to American soil or punish the entire EU with tariffs. Brussels would then face a brutal choice, let ASML burn or push them to pack up and shift westward. But there's another deeper threat, one that's causing real panic in the West. China is catching up, fast. And that's the real reason ASML's stock is sinking. Investors aren't just reacting to tariffs, they're fearing the inevitable. A world where China no longer needs ASML. How far behind is China, really? No one knows. It could be three years, it could be three months. But here's what we do know. China will lead the world in semiconductor investment in 2025, with over $38 billion already allocated nearly double that of South Korea. In 2024 alone, China poured more than $50 billion into its chip ecosystem. And it's not just money. China has the human capital. In 2020 alone, China produced 3.6 million STEM graduates, more than 41% of its university cohort. Compare that with the US, and it's clear who has the momentum. And while labor and development costs soar in the United States, China has one advantage the West cannot replicate. Mass production, streamlined logistics, and a government fully committed to bridging the tech gap. Which begs the question, was banning Chinese access to Western chips a strategic blunder? By denying China access the United States may have only. Had ASML and NVIDIA continued to sell, 
China might have remained dependent longer, but now, the game has changed. Look at what happened after Trump banned NVIDIA's H20 AI chip. Within, Huawei unveiled the DSN920, an AI chip built entirely through a Chinese supply chain. That's right, no foreign help, no external tech, all homegrown. And this chip isn't just symbolic, it's a real threat. Designed for inference applications, it performs the core functions needed for AI implementation across real-world platforms. It might not train large models like GPT-4, but it can run them. And that's... Jensen Huang, the rock star CEO of NVIDIA, got the message loud and clear. He jumped on a plane and flew to Beijing. This time, he left his signature leather jacket at home and wore a suit. It wasn't a PR stunt. It was survival mode. He didn't mince words. He promised to work with China for the next 30 years, emphasizing how critical the market is to NVIDIA's future. 30 years. That's not diplomacy. That's desperation. And while Washington dreams of reshoring chip production, China's playing chess. In response to US tariffs, Beijing just announced a 125% counter tariff. But with one clever twist, US chip makers that outsource production outside the US? Exempt. So if Nvidia continues building its chips through TSMC in Taiwan? No tariffs, no bans, smooth sailing into the Chinese market. This one exemption could crush Trump's reshoring efforts. The US is trying to bring manufacturing back. China is making sure it stays in Asia, and with Taiwan producing 62% of the world's chips, and the US stuck at just 7%, the numbers don't lie. Even if chips aren't made in mainland China, Beijing still wins. It keeps global chip flows anchored in Asia, it weakens US foundries, and it forces companies like Nvidia and Intel to choose patriotism or profit. Spoiler alert profit usually wins. Meanwhile, U.S. officials are finally waking up to the truth. Behind the scenes, China's been quietly building its own chip juggernaut. Once they bridge the final gaps, it's game over. Economies of scale will kick in. Chinese chips will reach parity. And when that happens, sanctions become meaningless. Huawei will flood Asia with affordable AI chips. Nvidia will lose market share. And the U.S. won't be able to stop it, not with tariffs, not with bans, not with diplomacy, and that's why Trump can't touch Jensen Huang. When asked about the NVIDIA CEO, he shrugged and said, Jensen's a great guy, I'm not worried about him at all because he knows there's no winning this war by force. Only by outcompeting. The chip war isn't about denying access. It's about who builds better, faster, smarter. China has the money, the minds, and the motivation. The West, it has bureaucracy, rising costs, and a shrinking talent pool. So, will ASML survive a second Trump presidency? Can China really thrive without NVIDIA? Or is the chip war entering a new phase, where the hunter becomes the hunted? Let me know in the comments below. Hit that like button, subscribe for more geopolitical breakdowns, and stay tuned, because this isn't just about chips, this is about the future. And the future is being printed in silicon,